hello. All right, I'm going to take this gum out because I just need to freshen up my mouth. And <clears throat> I had to put my phone on the, um, the vent phone holder because it is incredibly warm today. And if I put it anywhere else, the phone is going to overheat. So right now, the phone is attached to the vent phone holder because I have the AC on. That's going to keep the phone nice and cool while I'm talking to you. But good afternoon. I just wanted to jump on really quickly and talk with the ladies about why most men get into relationships. Why most men get married. Mm. And you know what? Some of you all are not going to like what I have to say, but I want you to listen with an open mind. Okay? This is one of the reasons why, this is a big reason why, <laughs> most men get into exclusive or committed relationships or get into marriages. And there's a reason why I'm telling you this specifically, and I'm going to talk a little bit about that. Why am I, why am I saying this specifically? Okay? So according to Dr. Pat Allen's work, she's the author of Getting to I Do. She says that women, and this is, remember, this is evolutionary psychology. Women are entering into uh, exclusive and committed relationships or marriages because they want stability, security. They want uh, a provider and a protector. Like they want um, the stability and security of those things, right? That that makes women feel safe and secure when they are in an exclusive and committed relationship. So how women are wired, that is their number one requirement. That's their number one need is safety and security. Most women don't do well when they don't know what we are, where we're going, why we're going there, how fast, how slow. Like the lack of clarity is why a lot of women act up. That's why a lot of women act up. And I often tell my male clients, if your wife or girlfriend is acting out, chances are there is a lack of frame and there is a lack of clarity. And those two things create an anxiety in feminine women. We need to have masculine frame. We need to have a strong, safe, secure, masculine container. We need to know what is happening. What are we doing? And what timeline are we doing it? Where are we going? You know, all of those things. So that's usually why women, they are looking to secure a man uh, to be exclusive with, to be committed with, and to be married to. And yes, women, if you are between a certain age range, women eventually want to have a family. And they want to do that in the safety and security of a marriage or a committed relationship. Most women do not want to, uh, quiet as it's kept, and a lot of people are not going to believe this, but most women do not want to bring children into the world uh, in, an, in an uncommitted, uh, I barely know you. Like, most women don't want to do that. Um, but it happens because right now, I don't know why, people are not using all of the birth control resources that they have available. They're not using it. I don't know why, because we have lots of ways to prevent pregnancy, but people are not using it. So I digress. But why do men, why do men get in exclusive and committed relationships? Why do men get married? Hmm. So the number one reason, according to evolutionary psychology, according to Dr. Pat Allen's book, Getting to I Do, is they want to secure sexual access. Men want stable sex. They want to have their sexual needs fulfilled consistently. Okay? And if they have a girlfriend, if they have a wife, that is the way to do it. That is the way to do it. I have a girlfriend. I have a wife. I have someone that I have invested in. I've put in time, energy, and effort. And I've built a level of safety and security with. And therefore, I should have consistent sexual access to this person. And a lot of women, you all really, really um, 
you underestimate that. You really underestimate how important that is to a man. They want to have someone available to them sexually, you know, that is consistent. They want stable, consistent sexual access. Okay. Now, here's what I'm going to say is different in 2024. So this book was written some time ago. And here's what's changed in 2024. So now men, a lot of men, not all men, not mo- I wouldn't even say not most men, not even most men, but a, a good amount of men do have sexual access to women. And that is why the desire for relationship is gone. And I am going to, if you're a lady, however you feel about this is how you feel. I squarely put that on the shoulders of women. Okay? So if you are a woman and you're watching this, it's either you, it's your friends, it's your cousins, it's your mama, it's your whoever. That's that's the problem. It's women that's the problem. Okay? So we have given away sexual access to men who have not earned it. And that's how we got here. Somebody told us that it was going to be so much fun to sleep with men without being committed, without being exclusive, and that we, you know, sex was just so much fun that we should be doing it with whoever we want. And we shouldn't need to have exclusivity or commitment. We shouldn't need to wait. And we we believe that lie. And we started doing that. And the price of sex did this. It went straight down into hell. And so now, because that was the number one reason why why men secured relationship, that is the number one reason. And I know y'all not going to like that. I know you're not going to want to hear it, but that's the truth. Men secure relationship for consistent sexual access. Now, there are thousands of other reasons why men get into relationships. But that, that is the one based in evolutionary psychology. That is the one, the subconscious reason that most men don't even realize. But that's the reason. So, unfortunately, you or your sister, or your friend, or your mama, or your whoever, your auntie, or whoever's out here, you know, throwing it around, because they decided to give it out hand over fist without a man earning it. And remember, it's not about money. It's about time, energy, and effort. So the man has to put in time, energy, and effort. You need to feel comfortable. You need to feel his investment. You need to feel like, okay, this is something, you know, that I want to do. Uh, I feel good about. I'm not going to regret later. You should feel all of those feelings before your clothes. You should have conversation. You should, all of that should happen before your clothes come off. But because somebody, some, some women somewhere decided, no, we don't need that. We don't need time. We don't need energy. We don't need effort. We just need space and opportunity because some woman somewhere made that decision. We all inhaled. We're all paying for it because now based on what I'm hearing out there, that based on what clients are telling me, based on what I even experienced last year when a a young man tried to, you know, tried to engage with me, call himself trying to get to know me. Our second conversation, he asked me, uh, would I be willing to be his number one sex partner? Talking about, oh, I have a roster of women, but I want you to be number one. Like, I, I, I can't make this up. That he felt emboldened, he felt entitled to say that out of his mouth is abominable but he did he said it over the phone he didn't say it face to face but he said it over the phone i was like well, who do you think you're talking to like what are, you, what are you talking about and then he got real defensive well you know if you don't if, if that's not your thing you know don't try to make me feel bad you know 
um, it's okay. It's different strokes for different folks. No, sir. Do not ever call this number again. Do not ever message me anywhere. Do not ever. Ever. But this is where we at. Men actually believe they are entitled if they take you on a date, if they do anything with you and pay for anything. They feel entitled. And let me tell you something. These men get their feelings hurt with me every time. Every single time. Because guess what? And I wish I could give this to ladies. I wish I could pour this into other women. I don't feel bad about you spending your money and you not getting nothing from me. I don't feel bad at all. Nothing you say to me, no no uh, eye rolling or heavy breathing or teeth sucking, none of that's going to get me to feel bad or guilty about any money you spent out with me. It's not going to make me feel bad. It's not going to make me feel guilty. It's certainly not going to let me uh, let you have access to my body. See, that's how I'm different. And can I be real? A lot of men try that guilting tactic or that, you know, sighing and eye rolling and the breathing out. And all. They try that tactic because it works. There are actually women out there that feel the pressure. They feel the pressure of, oh, my gosh, she just paid for this dinner. And now, you know, he wants to come back to my house and watch a movie. And if I say no, I'm going to get that. Like, can I, can I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a go out of character for a minute. You ready? I'm, I'm a go clean out of character. Nigga, what? What? No, you're not coming back to my house. And nothing you say or do is going to make me feel any kind of way about that. As a matter of fact, not only are you not coming back to my house, but this little tantrum, this little eye rolling, teeth sucking, heavy breathing or whatever, you, the second I get home, I'm, we're done. We're done. You have completely lost any and every access you thought you had. Like, I'm good. That's what that little tantrum got you. So, ladies, I, honest to God, and just like when I see these videos where the guy, you know, acts like he's going to reach for the bill, and the lady, she makes an effort like to pay her part or to leave a tip. I don't even do that. I don't even do that. I don't even act like I'm going to reach for the bill. I don't even act like I'm going to tip. This is a date. It was your intention to get to know me and to see if we are compatible or to see if we like each other. And last I checked, I'm a girl and you're a man. Like I am the girl. And at no point, at no point in this whole dynamic will I ever apologize for that. Will I ever feel bad about that? I'm the girl. I'm the girl. That's just what happens. But in 2024, as they say, men in their soft air, men in their soft life air, oh, we're not trying really hard anymore. We're not doing this or that. We're not paying for... The, we're not picking up the bill anymore. Okay, those are men that I don't see. Those are men that I don't see and I don't date. That's it. I don't see those men and I don't date those men. And I want to encourage you ladies to do the same. Like, why are you worried about men that don't meet the standard? Please, please make it make sense. Why are you concerned about men that don't meet your standard, your bare minimum, ask me on a date. We meet out if it's a first time or if I kind of know you, you pick me up from my house, you do all the chivalrous things, you pick up the check, you know, we kiki and I smile and I look good and smell good. Like, that's the bare minimum. And y'all are out here, well, he, you know, he, I think he's going to expect something. So I'm going to pay my part. No, I'm not going to pay anything. I'm not going to pay anything. And he's not going to get anything I don't want to give him. Like, sincerely, sincerely, I need you to get this in your soul. And, and no matter what temper tantrum, no matter what eye rolling or huffing and puffing, that doesn't matter. 
I've dated men for months and months where I experienced all of that. I experienced a little bit of an attitude, a little bit of huffing and puffing, a little bit of, oh, what are we doing? You know, why aren't we intimate and this and that? I was like, okay, we cannot do this anymore. Like, because I'm going to keep it 100. If this continues, I'm just going to cut you clean off. Like, nobody's going to pressure me. Nobody's going to pressure me. Nobody's going to tell me what I need to do with my body. One, two, three dates or whatever the rule is. No one's going to tell me that. And I need you to get this in your spirit. Stop letting this culture tell you what you need to be doing with your body. That's insane. It's insane. It's insanity. Okay? So if you are a gentleman, because that's all I, I associate with, if you're a gentleman and you are interested in me and you want to go out with me and you want to take me somewhere and you want to, yes, yes, yes to all of it. But if you even think about, you know, having a little tizzy, having a little temper tantrum because you don't get a kiss, you don't get invited up, you know, or into my house or up to my room, if you even think of doing that. Like, that's told me everything I need to know. Everything I need to know has been revealed in that interaction. And I'm good. Like, I'm good. And as I always tell the gentleman, leading with sex will get you less sex. <laughs> like, like I, I just don't know how else to say that. Leading with sex will get you a whole lot less sex, especially for a woman who is feminine, a woman who has high self-worth and high, high value, a woman who is a quality woman, a woman who is a feminine woman. Lead with sex and watch what happens. So now I'm clean turned off. I, you know, I got nothing. I got nothing now because, like I said, I'm totally turned off to you. And I could have thought you were the cutest thing ever. I could have, you know, we could have vibed over dinner. But if you start sweating me for some sexual favors... It, is, it ruins it. And you know what I usually do? I usually tell them that. Dang. And look, they have a little tizzy and I go, dang. And they go, what? And I say, wow, you just you just ruined it. Like I straight up tell them. I tell them the truth. You are ruining it. You are ruining what it could have one day been the most wonderful thing in your world. But you are blowing it. Like I tell them straight to their face. You just blew it or you're blowing it. And if you can get back right, if you can get, if you can readjust yourself and get back right, we can get back on course. But if you don't, I'm okay. I'm okay. I wish every woman felt this way. I am okay. You're not going to pressure me. You're not going to tell me what to do with my body. None of that's going to happen. And, and your little tizzy at the table is not going to get me to pay half the check. That's why when women, oh, well, I'll go ahead and, no, I'm not going to pay. Like, I'll straight up tell you to your face, I'm not going to pay. This is a date. You've invited me out. Your intention was to get to know me, to see if we were a good fit for each other. And look, I'm old-fashioned. So whatever the little young men got to say about that, oh, well, why can't you pay for it? Because I'm old-fashioned. I'm an old-fashioned traditional girl. And in my mind, you know, where I come from, if a man asks me on a date, he pays. He pays. So how you feel about that is how you feel about it. But mm -hmm, I, you can't even guilt me into paying half the check. That, it'd be blowing my mind watching women succumb to the little tactics and paying half the check. Or, well, you can walk me to my room. Or let your no be no, ladies. Learn how to say a good no. Please, please learn how to say no. And there's a thousand ways to say no. No, I, I'm, I don't feel comfortable with that. We just, we just met each other. I do not feel comfortable having you in my personal private space. We're still strangers. We're, we're still strangers. I know we had a really great dinner. I know we had, you know, we had a vibe at dinner. But we're, you're still a stranger to me. Like, say what it is. It really irritates me that we're afraid to say the truth. We're afraid to say the truth. We are strangers. We don't know each other. I don't feel safe. I, you know, say the truth. Say the truth. 
I don't feel safe or secure having you, a stranger, someone I just met, in my personal space. I don't feel comfortable. Like, no, I, I just don't understand why we, we, we're not doing this. But yeah, that's, that's the reason why. Men are marrying for sexual access. They want that sexual access to be consistent. And that is the biggest dupe of all when men say, you know, a lot of women will come on strong sexually or they'll, you know, have a lot of sex with me in the beginning. And then I'll and see, here's what men are thinking. Okay, we're having a lot of sex. I'm going to go ahead and secure this. Like this seems to be a, um, a consistent thing. It seems to be a regular thing. If nothing else, I can regularly have sex with this woman. That's what the man is thinking. I know y'all hate it. You hate hearing it, but it's the truth. Now, in the process of that, you may be cool in other ways. You may have add value in other ways. You know, there may be other things there. The man may slip up and fall in love. That happens too. Men don't go into it with the intention of falling in love. They slip up and fall in love. They slip up and become attached. Men are not us. They're not sitting with... Yes, I believe that men tend to be more romantic in the sense of they really believe in unconditional love, but... They're not romantic in the sense of, oh, my oh, my reason for interacting with women is, you know, romance and falling in love. No, it's not. It's not. Most men, mm -mm, it's not. Most men are not interacting with women to have some sort of fantasy, you know, love thing. No, they're not. They are trying to secure sexual security. They're trying to have consistent sex with a partner, with a lady that, okay, I, you know, I feel good about this lady. Um, this is some someone I can come to over and over and over. And I feel good about this. Like, this is this is kind of what my body needs. That, that's it. And you're not going to want to hear that, but it's the truth. And then all the other stuff is like, oh, she's also really cool. She's a great cook. And, oh, she's really, you know, inspirational. And she's always influencing me in a positive way. Oh, she's really smart. Like, those things are going to come later. And some of y'all are thinking what like yeah but that's the truth somebody has to tell you the truth okay so here's how men feel duped in that so a woman because she likes to trade sex for love she likes to trade sex for exclusivity that's what she thinks she's doing well i'll give him sex i'll make that sex consistent and i will be rewarded with exclusivity and commitment i will get the girlfriend trophy or i will get the wifey trophy i'll become the wife or i'll get the girlfriend trophy that's what a lot of women believe. And they will pour it on strong. But here's what's interesting. This is how men feel duped. Is once in that exclusive relationship, once in that, you know, girlfriend, boyfriend relationship, once they're living together, once they're married, the woman now drops off. She feels comfortable. She's like, oh, yeah, I don't have to do all that. I don't have to do all them tricks. I don't have to get on my knees. I don't have to, you know, get on my back and get on. Yeah, I don't have to do all that. I got him now. And definitely, this is definitely a woman that if she's doing all these sexual escapades and the man, let's say the man does fall in love or he gets attached. Once she realizes, okay, this man is really feeling me. Like he's, he's really feeling me. He's attached to me. He's bonded to me. That's, that's when she's going to majorly drop off. Because at that point, she's like, okay, well, you know, we're together. I don't need to do all that. And ladies, what do I always tell you? If you ever plan on stop having sex, do not marry a man. Do not marry a man. Do not get in a relationship with a man. Because I've told you this thousands of times. Men need sex. They need to be sexual. That is in their very DNA. And again, there was a time when women closed their legs, when women didn't give it up, when women didn't, you know, go out here having casual sex with everybody. That was a big part of a man securing a relationship with a woman. That was a big part of a man marrying a woman. But now a man can have you every which way but loose and not even be your boyfriend. He can have you drop into your knees and not even your boyfriend that's how far we've fallen so there's, there's absolutely no advantage to him marrying you there's no advantage to him being in a committed relationship with you 
he's not even going to go there. If I can come over at 10, 11 o'clock, I can come over after the club or the cigar bar and you and you drop it like it's hot. OK, like that's that's what I'm going to opt for. I'm not going to opt for no full on relationship. I'm not going to opt to come over here and have dinner with your family. I'm not going to opt to go to your uh, son's basketball game. I'm not going to opt to go to the family cookout. I'm not going to opt to take you to a funeral or go to weddings. I'm not going to opt to do any of that. I'm not going to opt to help you financially. I'm not going to opt to help you with your car and blow your leaves and cut your eye. He's not going to do any of that. And you know why? Because he's getting what he wants for free. It don't cost a thing. It costs zero investment for him to get what he wants. And y'all really think y'all be winning. Y'all really think y'all are winning. And now you realize you're not winning. Nobody is. Nobody's winning right now. But like I said, ladies, you have to close up shop. You have to close up shop until I have a stronger form of commitment. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. I will not. And, and that's that. And I can't tell you how many men say, stop telling women that. You keeping women single. You know, can I be honest with you? Maybe some women do need to be single. Like, y'all say that like it's a curse. You're keeping women single. Maybe that's not a bad thing. Maybe some women need to be single. Because right now, if I can be honest, you got women choosing between being single and giving all of them away to someone that they're not committed to. So when you say single, like, what are you talking about? Because last I checked, men are not exclusive men are not committed men are not married so in essence with those men and it's not it's 99 percent men saying that what those men are saying is please don't cut off our coochie supply that's what they saying anita shut up you about to cut off our coochie supply because the truth is these women that they're sleeping with they're not committed to them they're not in relationships with them they're not married to them they're not boyfriend and girlfriend or whatever they're getting free sex. So this idea of, oh, Anita, you're going to keep women single. You mean out of your bedroom? I'm going to keep women off your dick? That's what I'm, is that what I'm doing? That's what you mean. Because I'm going to be honest with you. These women are single. These women that you're sleeping with, that you're not married to, they are single. <laughs> and, and I'll even go to the boyfriend, girlfriend. The woman is technically single. She's not married. She technically single. So I, I mean, so make it make sense. I'm keeping women single, but they already are. Like you just don't want your free coochie supply to dry up. That's why they keep telling me to shut up. <laughs> stop telling women to keep their legs closed and stop messing with us and this and that. Until you have exclusivity and commitment, until you're married, that's exactly what y'all need to do. But that's the truth. Men's primary you know, their primary reason is sexual consistency. They want to have sexual access and they want that access to be consistent. So even a friends with benefits or even a situation ship, even that can be a little spotty, you know, because technically you're not together. You're not in a relationship together. And that can get a little spotty, right? So she's gone on a girl's trip. Her kids got something going on. And he's sitting back going, dang, you know, this is my friends with benefits, but she ain't never home or she got stuff going on. Like, I'm still not getting it regular. And then what a lot of men tend to do is then find someone else to add to the roster. That's where we get the rockster from. Well, I'll just, I have to build a roster. She can be my number one, but I could have a number two, a number three, a number four. Let me figure that out. You know, I can have a little roster. But that's, that's really what, you know, what people are doing. And that's how we got here. That's how we got here. Women, their standard got lower and lower and lower. They started giving men more and more access with less and less, you know, investment. And here we are. But that, it, it falls straight on our shoulders. And I'm including myself. Now, have I ever given a man free sex? 
or given him access without being my man. No, you know, all the men that I had sex with, you know, even when I wasn't married, we were in a relationship. We were in a committed relationship. They were my boyfriend. Um, I don't do that now. <laughs> like I said, that those days are over. I don't do that now. I'm looking for my husband. I'm looking for someone to build the rest of my life with and ride out the rest of my life with. So I'm not, I definitely am not doing that anymore. But I at least required exclusivity and commitment. Like months would go by. Men would go, men would date me. They would get to know me and date me. Months would go by and they would be like, so what's up? I'm like, so what's up with what? You know, like, what are you talking about? I mean, you know, we're not, I, I just, and look, this is what they always say. So ladies, I'm going to give y'all a little game. This is what they're going to do to try to get, to flip the script on you, right? To get you to doubt yourself. This is the first thing they're going to say. Well, I'm really questioning if you even feel of me. Like, I'm, I'm just, I, I can't tell if you like me. I'm questioning if you feel of me. And this is what I say in response, okay? Well, how would you know that I'm feeling you? What would I do? What would I say so that you would know that I'm really liking you? I'm, I'm really feeling you, right? I put it back on them. And they might say, well, you know, I mean, you know, we would be, we would be closer. Closer how? Well, we would be intimate. Oh, intimate as in a deep knowing of one another. I, I love that. I love that. I would love to get you to know you better. You know what I mean. No, I don't. No, I don't. I mean, like sexually, you know, we would be sexually intimate. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. So if I'm not having sex with you, that means I'm not into you. Is that your logic? I'm not into you because I'm not having sex with you. Like we have a full on conversation about it because I want them to hear how it sounds. Right. So I'm, I'm, I, if I'm not having sex with you, that's me not liking you. Is that how you feel? Like I actually asked that question because it's, it's something I need to know. Me personally, there are a lot of ways to let a person know that you're crazy about them without having sex with them. So I just want to see where the man's head is at. But yeah, have that conversation. Stop being afraid to have that conversation. What are you talking about? Get him to say it with words. We're not having sex. We're not being sexual with each other. And that's when you're going to have the conversation. Well, I don't feel comfortable being sexual with someone that I'm not exclusive with. I don't feel comfortable being sexual with someone I'm not committed to. If I'm not in a relationship with a man, I'm not going to be having sex with him. What do you think about that? See? Cut and dry. Cut and dry. No fluff. And please, whatever you do, ladies, stop explaining you do not need to explain. I do not have sex with someone I'm not exclusive and committed with or that I'm not married to or engaged to or whatever your standard is. No, I'm not doing that. And then he gets to decide, uh oh, she actually has standards. She actually has self-esteem. She actually has self-worth and self-love. Uh oh, I can't just, you know, get the roll the okie doke on her. No, you can't. And let's sprinkle in a little, I'm willing to leave you alone. Because that's the other card he's going to play. Okay, so you mean to tell me you're not going to, because there's a whole lot of other women who will. Bye. Bye. Okay. That's the protocol. We need to go back to that. That's what's missing. That's the protocol that's missing. We got too many women that are being shamed into having sex when they're not comfortable or not ready. They don't have the level of commitment they desire. No, that's not me. And again, if a man said, why are you single? Because I have standards. That's it. I have standards. That's why I'm single. I have a standard in which, you know, I've never dropped the bar on. And if you're not meeting that minimal standard, like, there's no reason to be in a relationship. There's no reason to date you. Like, you must meet the standard. And remember, a lot of my standard is based on what I give. It's not just some delusion in my head. It's who I am. It's what I offer. It's the value that I bring. Okay? 
ladies, I need you to do the same thing. And my standard is not based on money at all. My standard has nothing to do with money. Okay? It is my value. It is my worth. It is my morals. It is my integrity. That's what makes up my standards. So, yeah, I say that all the time. I said, yo, why are you single? Because I have standards. Because I have healthy boundaries. And unfortunately, I have not as of yet met a man that can work within them. Why are you single? Because I require uh, a man that I admire. I require a man be respectable, that he be trustworthy, that he have integrity. And thus far, you know, I haven't found that in a man that I'm attracted to. Like, that's it. I can explain all day. I can give like 10 reasons as to why I'm single. And none of them are a lie. All of them are the truth. So if that's the truth, a lot of women hate when I say that, that, yeah, that's a man's number one reason for trying to secure a relationship. And remember, there's a large population of men, especially now, that are sexless. <clears throat> They're not having sex at all. There's a, a percentage of men between 18 and 30 that have not had sex in the past year, maybe longer. So if you're, you know, trying to offer them some stable, consistent sexual access, I mean, they'll jump at the chance. They'll jump at the chance to be with you. But again, you have to have standards, right? They have to meet whatever your minimal standard is. And I would simply state that. Like, yeah, you know, I'm, if you're open to having sex before you're married, it being committed, um, co-creating a healthy relationship together, and whatever else it is that you want, right? So as long as he can do that, you're good. You're good. That's it. But there's a huge percentage of men that they won't leave relationships because of, you know, the fear of losing sexual access. Like they won't leave the relationship because they're like, oh, dang, I'm going to have to go back out here and try to find consistent sex again. Like, this girl's on my nerves. I don't really like her. I'm not really feeling her. But I am having somewhat consistent sex. So the thought of giving that up, you know, kind of sucks. So I guess I'll just put up with her mouth. And the whole time, they're building a habit of allowing a woman to disrespect them, allowing a woman to talk to them crazy. Like, they're they're creating a very toxic, dis dysfunctional situation. So... Yeah, men have a scarcity mindset, especially now, because as a lot of the men say, women are too picky. Women are too picky. Okay. But that's the truth, ladies. That is the truth. And so the reason why I share that is because I want you to maintain a standard for yourself. Okay? So if you, if you are going to offer some level of sexual consistency, I want it to be because the man has met your standard. Like he, he should meet your standard because if not, it's like, okay, you've abandoned yourself. You've abandoned yourself. You've given him everything he wants. And at the cost of what? At the cost of abandoning yourself? No, don't do that. Do not do that. Say, Hey, here's a standard I have. And you know, I always preach abstinence. I know most of y'all are not going to do it. So to that, I simply state, okay, can you at least have a standard about being exclusive and committed? To me, that's like the bare minimum. And it's like women can't, they can't do it. It's so weird to me. They can't do it. And they, it's like the fear in them, the fear that a man will walk away. And it's like, okay, but he's not even your man. Like, that's what I don't understand. You're so fearful about this man walking away if you set that type of standard, but he's not even your man. Like, you're afraid of losing what isn't even yours. So I just don't understand that. Like, make it make sense. You are afraid of losing a man that is not even your man. So now I'm good. Like, I stand 10 toes down. I let men know what I stand on. And honestly, if a man took me out three or four times and he found out, oh, so you are, you're really, you know, trying to wait until you're married. I say, yeah. Okay, well, I'm not trying to do that. All right, bye. I mean, what, 
what am I losing? <laughs> Can we be honest? Why would I be upset? What am I losing? I'm losing a man that isn't even mine. He's not even my, my boyfriend. Like, we went out two or three times. So I'm losing a man who I went out two or three times who wants me to go against my standard, who wants me to abandon myself, to lose my integrity, to make him feel good for, I don't know, 90 seconds? No, I think I'm good. I think I'm good. It, you know, it, it would be a short-term gratification over my long-term, you know, me having something real. No, I think I'm good. I will not abandon myself, especially to make somebody else feel good. Like, I definitely ain't on that. I definitely don't get that. I'm not on that at all. So, again, maybe it's my job to try to, to encourage or inspire you. Please don't abandon yourself. And what's so crazy is I hear stories like this all the time where women are abandoning themselves. They're doing something they don't want to do or they're doing it sooner than they want to do it. And then, oh, heaven forbid if that man disappears. Heaven forbid if that man ghosts you, he disappears, he starts kicking it with someone else. That is what really hurts. What really hurts is that you abandon yourself. So when I see women cry, when I see them cry in my office, cry in my sessions, I know that pain. I know the pain of abandoning yourself for a man, going against your values, going against your morals, thinking that that somehow was going to make him want to be with you, want to stay with you, and he doesn't. And he doesn't. It doesn't even work. So that's why I tell people, yeah, when I walk away from people now, I'm like, oh, at least I left everything intact. I'm good. Yeah, I walk away with everything intact. I don't abandon myself. I don't do something I'm not comfortable with. I don't do it before I'm ready to do it. I just, okay. Oh, too bad. That didn't work out. That's honestly what I think. That's what I feel. Oh, that sucks. I wish it could have worked out, but it didn't. That's it. But some of y'all are like, distraught because you know in your spirit I abandoned myself for this man like I went against my better judgment I went against my morals I went against my belief or my values and this is how it turns out like dang that's what you grind about so don't abandon yourself don't abandon yourself stay, stand, stand tall stand on what you believe in and, and trust me, trust me when I tell you that when you do that, you know, the person who comes along and they respect that, they're like, wow, this is like counterculture. Like, you're really not going to, like, no, you're not going to do this? No, no. Something about that is very attractive. So that's the man I want you to be with. Okay. I hope this helped. Uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, and I know you are, please subscribe to the channel. Please like this video. And you may tip me. I have to say that now. You may tip me here on YouTube if you got any value from this video. If you'd like to work together one-on-one, -on -one, you can find the link down below in the description box. You can um, connect with me through Pillar. And there you can find all of my offerings. You can find one-on-one uh, -on -one coaching. You can do a custom request. Like everything you could want is down there in that pillar link. So that is the way to contact me. I thank you so much for watching. Thank you for supporting the channel. And as always, stay open to love.